My name is Susie Pakchin, and I make wearable technology. Fashion and technology have always been intertwined, and the new frontier now is smart materials or the actual literally embedding of electronics into our garments themselves. Smart materials, unlike ordinary materials, have the amazing ability to change state um, as a result of a stimulus from their environment. One of the smart materials I like to use is photochromic ink that I create from mixing a smart pigment with a transparent base. You can see that the ink is white, but once exposed to ultraviolet light, like the sun or a black light, it changes color. When the UV light source is removed, it goes back to being transparent again. Here's just a pattern that's been screen printed. This you is can use photochromic black inks black. to create dynamic patterns on textiles. I made a pair of blinds that change patterns depending on what time of day it is. You can have wallpaper made of this stuff. Or even t-shirts, you know, you can have parts of your t-shirt reveal certain graphics when you're outside and have them conceal other graphics when you're inside. So my name is Susie Patchen, and I'm here to talk um, about fashioning technology a DIY intro to smart crafting. The idea behind smart crafting was getting people to think about creating objects and textiles or toys that are responsive or dynamic or reactive. Some of my influences stem from you know, a little bit of sci-fi literature. <laughs> you know? I love the Space Invaders tote because it's just a fun, quirky bag that you would carry out with you when you're out at night. It gives you an ambient signal, the little um, LED eyes on the Space Invader tote will start to, start to blink to let you know that you're getting a call. It's just an electromagnetic field sensor. You can switch it up so you can have your whole bag glow on the interior. One thing I made is Ariel the birdie brooch. Ariel is a custom printed circuit board. When you're outside in the sun, she starts to sing to you. And the way Ariel works is she's powered by a solar panel. So her circuit gets excited um, just as the sun rays fall and it activates her voice. Um, here's another sort of simple project that you can do is the, there are these set of headphones that actually have these little lights on them. You can plug them into your MP3 player when you're going out for a jog at night. It makes you a little bit more visible. This is just an LED bracelet like we're gonna be making today. And what I've done in this one is I've made the battery function as a switch. There's something about LED lights that gets kids and adults really excited. Uh, I put it in the center. You can put your LED anywhere. I mean, everyone's flipped on a switch before. <laughs> we know we're able to, capable of turning lights on, but there is something that's magical about doing it yourself and the immediacy of it. The workshop at MoCo was geared towards high school students. They did excellent in terms of the hands-on skills. We had a student make an eye patch, which was pretty fun, and another one made an anklet. It was an LED on, placed on his ankle, and it was intended for when he went bike riding as a little safety light. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> awesome. Good when I left the building, I saw a group or a clan of little red glowing things walking down the street, and it was, it was pretty nice to see, and they all seemed pretty excited about what they had just made in a couple of hours. Excellent. When I'm starting a project, uh, I generally go to downtown LA to the Fashion District, which is one of my favorite parts of the city, to search for fabric or just to search for inspiration. I'm looking for just some metallic silk organza. The garments I make have electronics embedded in them, so I need to work with fabrics that conduct electricity. I use a multimeter to test to see if a fabric is conductive. These are the fibers that are conductive because they're foiled in copper. And that's what actually gives it the nice little metallic sheen. So this is good. What I'm looking for are some snaps. Ordinary snaps work as great switches. Um, zippers also can be used. Jewelry clasps, magnetic clasps, are really great ways of connecting the electronics directly onto the textiles themselves. Because fashion and technology is such a new frontier, there aren't necessarily any rule sets that guide it, which makes it a very exciting place to be as a designer. Let me explain to you what this is. This is part of the found sound project. It's just a prototype. It's of a wearable 
where we're going to do is you run around finding ambient sounds and you record them. The idea is to collect sounds and then play them back from the garment itself using soft switches. Um, the way it works, we have just two pieces of conductive fabric. When you press down on it using your elbow, the two plates or pieces of conductive fabric touch, which triggers the sound to get played back. You could use a regular push button switch on clothing, but that would be uncomfortable to wear and awkward to use. So I create my own switches using conductive materials. I'm making a second set of switches for the wrists using a laser cutter to make designs that are both intricate and functional. So what you get is a decorative piece of fabric with your pattern cut out, which is really nice. The holes in the pattern are what's going to allow the two sleeves. When they touch, the holes will actually allow direct contact between the two pieces of conductive fabric, which should trigger the sound on the wearable to play. What I've done here is I've hacked into just a sound recording module that you can sort of buy at any sort of electronic store. I want to remove the speakers so that they can be attached separately to the garment for playback. I'm going to add some snaps. Um, this will enable me to remove the speaker from the garment and if I need to ever wash the garment. It makes the, the electronic components a little bit more modular. So I'm gonna place the speaker here, but now I need to figure out how I'm going to sew the remaining circuitry. What kind of noises does it make? Um, whatever we record. So we're gonna actually try to record some sounds. And when the LED turns um, red, it's okay. recording. I think it records about five to 10 seconds. And then when we put it on your garment, it should play back. So let's record some sounds. That's pretty good. Super skills. I like it. That's pretty good. Nice. I like it. Cool. <laughs> It can be really fun at a party. Yeah, totally. Touch me when I make fun. For me, it's about combining the high tech with the low tech and developing something <laughs> that brings a sense of delight. There's not a huge market for wearable technology, and I'm obviously not into it for the money. It's a discovery process that excites me, discovering new ways of self-expression. An early pioneer of wearable technology was the 19th century French maker Gustave Trouvet, who created all kinds of devices, from steam engines to ornithopters. One of Trouvet's biggest hits was electromobile jewelry. Jeweled birds flapped their wings, skull tie-pins rolled their eyes, and little bunnies played the chimes. Hidden wires led to a small battery tucked in the wearer's pocket. Trouvet also created illuminating crystal jewels, which were threaded into costumes and mounted on props in theater productions. Trouvé's light and magic astounded audiences 100 years before remarkably similar visions would wow moviegoers. Major funding for Make is provided by Geek Squad.